good morning, or good afternoon if you're like me on the East Coast. Welcome to the Institute for Educational Advancement's first ever peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, the Readathon. My name is Hap Deneen. I've been a board member since 2014, and over the last six years, I've seen IEA grow to serve thousands of gifted kids. It's a phenomenal organization with a wide array of programs to serve gifted children from elementary school to high school and all throughout their lives. I'm very proud to be a part of this organization. I am also very excited to be with you to virtually kick off the IEA Readathon. Betsy and the team will share more details with you a little bit later, but I'd like to leave you with this quote from Lloyd Alexander, the author of some of my favorite books from the early days of elementary school and the Black Cauldron series. And that quote is, keep reading. It's one of the most marvelous adventures that anyone can have. So with that, please log on to educationaladvancement.org and let's get started. Thank you and have fun. Thank you, Hap. Welcome. Thank you for joining our virtual fundraiser for 2020. We're here today to kick off our reading challenge to raise funds and awareness for the unique needs of gifted youth. Before we get started, I have to say we literally would not be able to connect here today with you without the amazing team at IEA. In March, we all had to drastically change our way of living, working, schooling, connecting, and communicating. We had to learn to do things in new ways. The IEA team creatively found ways to pivot and move all of our content online, and they did it all while working remotely. This remarkable group of dedicated folks filled with immense integrity have done a tremendous job of directly supporting over 375 students this summer. We hosted all academy classes online with our largest numbers to date. We held two virtual camps, s'mores were definitely involved, and interviewed all 48 Carolyn D. Bradley Scholar finalists via Zoom. We even started a new program called Spyglass, which is, uses a digital platform to bring high-level content into the homes of gifted students all over the country. Not to mention the individual calls we all made to the extreme students in need during these challenging times. But that's why we're here, to passionately support the gifted young people of our country. I also wanna thank you who took the time to be with us this morning to grow and give in community. You are our inspiration. When IA was founded 22 years ago, we really thought that there was new awareness about gifted learners and the importance of advanced educational opportunities for all students. Yet, unfortunately, our country still does not have a system in place to celebrate the child who learns faster, who asks too many questions, is too intense, too sensitive, or refuses to show their work. We don't have a place for the first grader who's reading Harry Potter while the teacher is viewing vowels, or the child who completes a math problem by multiplying double digits instead of adding because she can. These children are out of place. They're told to slow down. How do you stop a child from wanting to learn, to grow, to do? And why would you? Would you ask a baseball player to stop perfecting his pitch so that all the players could hit the ball? The perception that students with extraordinary intellectual ability don't need our help has to change. America spends less than two cents on every hundred dollars on gifted education. And it's been estimated that nearly 80% of advanced learners are not being served. Many simply due to lack of identification. Students from underserved and underprivileged backgrounds are particularly at risk for not reaching their full intellectual and personal potential. Unchecked, this trend will leave a dearth of qualified scientists, engineers, inventors, entrepreneurs, leaders, and creative contributors to our nation's growth. We need these bright minds now more than ever. We must persevere. Gifted children who are not challenged are in jeopardy of being misunderstood, depressed, or shutting down. 
not just their future. They are our future. We are here to raise foreign funds to support the unique needs of these bright young people. But we're also here to enjoy each other, celebrate the joy of reading and engaging in a little friendly competition. Thank you in advance for helping us. We are all here committed to ensure this neglected population has the voice, ensuring that programs are available to assist young people in actualizing their full academic and personal potential, ensuring that teachers are trained to identify and serve advanced learners from all backgrounds, ensuring that each child we meet understands they are more than their intellect. They are seen, they are heard, and they are not alone. At IEA, there's hope. At IEA, we highlight aspects of character which promote health, growth, problem solving, and discovery. When we founded the organization, we chose to foster four characteristics in particular, integrity, passion, creativity, and perseverance. While we're in the midst of this unprecedented and uncertain times, know that we remain strong and we are here to support you. We will continue to offer engaging educational experiences that promote optimal challenge, exploration of ideas and recognition of personal potential now at a safe distance. While we cannot be together at the gala we planned, it is still important for us to connect. So we thought the readathon was a perfect idea for IEA to choose to raise funds to ensure that we stay strong into the future. The team will shortly share ideas on how to sign up and participate. And I'm excited to be a part of all that is planned. Also, keep your eyes out for some creative challenges that I'll be passionately throwing at each team member over the next four week period. Through perseverance, we know that each of you will read to raise funds and awareness. Remember, our integrity allows us to stand for what is right and just. Thank you for believing in the wonderful, creative, quirky, witty, bright minds of the young people of our country. And of course, to the young humans listening, never give up. Imagine all that you can do. Now, imagine the impact of what we can do working together. Go teams. Institute for Educational Advancement way back in 2019. Classes at IEA are unlike classes I've taken anywhere else. They're interactive, cha challenging, and I learned so much. I've taken some awesome classes there. Marine biology, cells, speech and debate. Right now I'm doing a writing class about Harry Potter. Now you can help support the Institute for Educational Advancement just by reading a book and joining their readathon. If you're like me, you read all the time. Whenever we go to the library, I get a giant stack of books. I hope you will participate in the IEA readathon to support their awesome programs. See you soon! Hello everybody, my name is Patrick Newcomb and I'm a senior at Sidwell Friends School in Washington, D.C. An interest that I have pursued since long before I became a CDB scholar is bird watching. On countless weekend long trips, I immersed myself in the quest to find as many birds as possible. Birding let me pursue the ideas that fascinate me, and it let me achieve the satisfaction of mastering bird songs and calls, and learning to give back to the community of birders that is so important to me. This ultimately took me to a research station in the Amazon rainforest. Five hours upriver from the nearest town, I realized that one of my takeaways is the power of passion. Um, following what we love to do tends to make us ha feel happy and purposeful. Another aspect of my high school experience that's been especially meaningful has been attending lectures at think tanks. By going to school in DC, this scholarship let me explore my interest in international relations in an environment that I never imagined possible for a high schooler. The IEA staff has tirelessly lifted me up, given me perspective, and offered insight for tough decisions. Without the um, Institute for Educational Advancement or my parents, sisters, and grandparents, my high school experience would not have been the same. Thank you, and thank you especially for supporting IEA's Readathon. 
I hope that our paths continue to cross in the future, and please stay safe and healthy in these difficult times. Hi everyone, IEA is so excited to kick off our very first readathon. We will be raising funds to support our programs and services as we wrap up a very memorable year. To do this, we're combining two of our favorite things, reading and friendly competition. You will be able to join one of four teams, which are named after IEA's tenants. Perseverance. Integrity. Creativity. And passion. Once you've picked your team, you have a few options. You can read a book off one of our lists, which we'll be offering Saturday book clubs for, or you can read a book of your choice. You can read something on your own, or you can read with your family or a group of friends. No matter what you choose to read, the important thing is that you share your fundraising page and reading accomplishments with your friends and family. Teams will also have many challenges throughout the next few weeks, so make sure you're following us on social media and keeping an eye on your team's landing page. I'll start us off by introducing myself as one of the team leads. I'm Nicole, a senior program coordinator at IEA, and I'll be leading Team Perseverance. You probably know me if you've participated in Academy, Spyglass, or Labs. I've been with IEA since 2016, and since then I've loved seeing the perseverance of our students. This year especially, our community has had to adapt so well to all of these changes. It's been fun to virtually meet students from all over the country now that our reach has expanded beyond our local region. And I'd love to have any new or, fam or familiar faces join forces with me on Team Perseverance. Hi, I'm Mallory, the Admissions Coordinator for the Caroline D. Bradley Scholarship Program. I'll be leading Team Integrity. It inspires me each and every day to see the integrity of not only the CDB scholars and alumni, but everyone in the IAA community, no matter the situation. I can't wait to meet everyone who joins Team Integrity. I'm Megan, a program manager at IEA, and I'll be leading Team Creativity. I love getting to work with all of the out-of-the-box thinkers who participate in our Academy and Spyglass programs. For me, creativity shows up in everything that I do, and I'm excited to think creatively about fundraising with you. Whether you think of yourself as an artist, a scientist, a writer, a dancer, or whatever it may be, let's take that creativity and work together. Can't wait for you to join my team. Hello, Team Passion. My name is Chow Lee. I am the UNASA Program Coordinator at IEA. At Camp UNASA, everyone comes together to celebrate their unique self, nurture balance, build connection, while igniting the passion to grow throughout the week of camp. As UNASA Senior Fellow Dr. Michael Pahowski so eloquently said, the passion for learning and mastery, so characteristic of the gifted, is driven by a very powerful emotion, intense interest. Let's explore our interest and passion together by diving into the magic of books. Please consider joining Team Passion. What a great selection of teams you all have to choose from. I can't wait to see who will come out on top. Next steps are coming soon. Welcome to the IEA Readathon homepage. On our homepage, you can do things like make a donation in various amounts. You can also make a one time donation or a monthly donation, and you can give in honor of somebody. On our homepage, you'll find our team leader video, the fundraisers, and the teams. You will also find links to share on social media by email and a link to copy. To start fundraising for IEA, click I want to fundraise for this. You will then select join a team. Once you're on this page, you can select the team you want to join. I am going to join integrity. Then you will create your account. On this page, you'll enter your name, email, and a password. Once you've created your account, you can upload a personal photo, a personal statement, and videos, and more. You'll also have hyperlinks to share by social media and by email. Thank you so much for listening, and we look forward to reading with IEA. Thank you all. What a great, great group of people. We're so excited you're joining us today. 
Beckett, amazing. Patrick, thank you so much. And for the team leaders at IEA, well done. Before we get started with the questions and answers that I'm sure you have, we wanted to say a few words about the passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We're deeply saddened by this. She is a great inspiration and will prove to be one of the most important people of our lifetimes. She did have an amazing quote that was shared with us last night. Reading is the key that opens doors to many good things in life. Reading shaped my dreams and more reading helped me make my dreams come true. Let's let your dreams come true with this readathon. Thank you. Question and answers? Thank you so much, much Betsy. We're gonna start off um, or spend the rest of our time together answering any of your questions that you may have about our readathon and fundraiser. To get us started, um, we have a, we've actually already received a few questions via email. Um, so I'm gonna start off by reading a few of those, but just so that you know, um, the best place for everyone to ask your questions would be in the Q&A. So at the bottom of your own screens, there's an opportunity for you to type in those questions for us and we'll be answering them um, as all of our team members join us on screen. So welcome team leaders. Um, the first question that we got last night via email um, that I would love for us to just get started with is, um, what, uh, or um, do we have to stick to the suggested reading list um, that you, we see on the website? So the answer to that is no. They, uh, you can choose any book that you'd like as long as you're sharing about it with your family and friends. Uh, and uh, we will still have some book clubs that are kind of more free form. But the sort of incentive for choosing a book off our list is that we will have um, moderated book clubs for you to participate in and, and kind of connect with your fellow IEA community members. Uh, and we'll have IEA staff and other community leaders leading those. But no, you do not have to choose necessarily just off our list. We've got another question that says, can we join more than one team? I'll answer this one. Um, so on our Give Lively page, you, we, you are encouraged to join one team. Um, there's a possibility the functionality may allow you to switch teams if you'd like to fundraise for a different team at a different time. But if you are in a family of fundraisers, we encourage you to join separate teams if you'd like um, and kind of spread, uh, spread your network across the four teams. But um, really, this is about even though there is that element of competition that we all, um, I think, are looking forward to, we definitely want to um, just encourage everyone to feel united that we are raising funds um, and awareness for our for IAA as a whole, um, even though the friendly competition element makes it a lot more engaging. Another question we've got is, do we have to donate money ourselves to reach our fundraising goal? Uh, Mallory, why don't you why don't you jump in and join us? Um, no, you do not have to donate money yourself to reach your fundraising goal. Um, you can raise that goal by reaching out to your family and friends yourself. But if you would like to donate to your own page, you can do that as well. But it, it is not mandatory that you have to donate to reach your goal. Great question. We've got another question here in our chat. Um, do you want us to clear certain types of fundraising plans with you? We were thinking of, um, as it looks like this family is looking to maybe partner with um, a local business possibly and, um, and get really creative about different ways to, to fundraise. Um, Chow, what would, you, what would you say to this question? I think this is a great idea. We love thinking create, creatively outside of the box. So this, speak, being outside of Romans, it's a, a, a great effort. If, and I encourage everyone to be out there, involve your neighbors, your community, your family, and help us spread the words. Thank you for the question. Absolutely. There was a um, question in the, oh, you just chose one from the Q&A. Great, go right ahead. Uh, when do we get to choose our books? 
So the answer is anytime. Uh, we, so we have our book uh, list posted and then we will be announcing the times and dates and details of the book clubs very soon, um, early next week. But you can choose your book anytime and start reading. The first step would be to create your fundraising page. And uh, when you share that fundraising page with your community, you can say what book you're reading and you can share that with us as well. And maybe we can uh, you know, find some similarities between our other community members to put together sort of some sort of events. So we'll be having all sorts of events that can tie into the books you're reading. And as we kind of see what people are reading and um, where our interests lie, then we will build those into uh, what we're gonna be doing to, to connect. Similarly, the next question is, how do you join a book club? Our book clubs will be um, featured on our website, the dates and times for all of those and links to join each one of those meetings. Book clubs are slated to happen predominantly on Saturday mornings, similar to this time, and or Saturday mornings, I'm sorry, if you're on the West Coast, if you're on the East Coast, it would be midday. Um, but all of the information about the upcoming events related to, um, to our readathon will be available on our website. So keep an eye out for that. We'll also send some email reminders as well periodically throughout our fundraising season together. And we can even post those in our um, team pages as well to make sure so you know you're getting the message and you can also see what of your which of your fellow teammates will be in the same book clubs as you. Uh, there's another question here that says, will we get, how do we get credit for the donors we've encouraged? So the way that works is that um, first you set up your own personal fundraising page and uh, you join a team. So for example, I'm the team leader for Team Perseverance. So when I set up my page, um, anything that I donate, that I raise, goes feeds into the goal that Team Perseverance has. Uh, and But even though I might not be donating all the money myself towards my page, anyone who uses my specific link to donate, it will feed into me and then from there feed into Team Perseverance. So it will be your unique link to your page that you have uh, that will make sure uh, your, your um, funds that you've raised are feeding into the right place. Can I add to that too? One yeah. other thing, if you see on the homepage the donors and you realize that there's a donor that you did outreach to but it didn't go towards your team, just let us know and we can have it transferred over to your page. Thank you for that note, Jill. Um, also, we've got another question here about fundraising. Mallory, maybe you can jump in and, and respond to this one. Do we select our individual fundraising goals? On the Give Lively page, they will have one that's kind of pre-made for you. Um, I think it, I can't remember what it's at to, um, to start you off with, but you can always go over that and then you can, um, you don't have to reach out if that's not okay, but that one's preset. You can always go over and don't worry if you don't make it. Every dollar counts. <laughs> We've got two similar questions that have come in. Um, one from our viewers on Facebook and one here in the Q&A. Um, how many books should we read? And the question from Facebook was specifically, can we choose more than one book on the list? Um, Chow, what do you think about our, um, about our enthusiastic readers? Absolutely. I think you can, you can and should read as many as you want. As some of our staff members have shared that they read multiple books concurrently. So I encourage you to pick as many or as few as you like to accommodate to your own reading pace. Yeah, I'll add on to that, that um, we don't have a, we specifically did not want to give students a specific requirement for how many books to read because you know, we know some people gobble up books, some of you maybe have things that you're reading for school, which could still count. Um, but so that is up to you how many you read as long as uh, you're just participating. That's what we'd like. And then I was thinking we could also share maybe what each of us will be planning to read. That might be a good thing. So um, even though I am one that will read a few books at once, the book from the list that I will be reading and the, one of the book clubs that I'll be participating in is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot, which is probably more for like that um, middle school age and up, but I'd highly recommend it if you are looking for something, uh, it's nonfiction and it kind of combines science, ethics, narrative, all sorts of interesting things. And we will actually have a former labs speaker 
um, who is a cancer biologist who has um, some insight to share on the book. We'll be joining that book club. Time is still pending, but I would love to have anyone who is interested in that sort of interdisciplinary crossover join that one and read that one with me. I know I'm planning on um, reading and supporting our readers who are interested in um, A Wrinkle in Time. It's one of my favorite books. I read it when I was really young and I read it more recently um, as or with a book club of middle school students. And so it's one of my favorites. I love the crossover of, um, of religion and science and just the way that it asks questions. So I'm really excited to engage in some great conversation with all of our readers who are interested in A Wrinkle in Time. Mallory Chow, what are you planning on reading? I'll be reading Esperanza Rising, which has been on my kind of to read list for a while now. Um, it combines my two, two of my favorite things of young adult fiction and historical fiction. So I'm really excited to read that and finally get it read on my list. So excited to be in those book clubs and talking with our readers about that book. And my is Matilda. It's been on my list for a while as well. And I'm excited to dive into this book. We've got a few more questions here in our, in our Q&A. So are there sponsorship opportunities? Um, I think actually that Beth Goldstein, I know you're not one of our team leads, but you are definitely a leader on IEA and you are working specifically with sponsorships. Would you mind jumping in and kind of sharing the work that we've been doing and ways that our participants can join us with sponsorship opportunities? My pleasure. Yes, you can. There are definitely sponsorship opportunities. If you go to the IEA Readathon website, you can click on the button that says sponsorship opportunities and there you can download the sponsorship pack with all of the details. Um, and if you have any specific questions, I'm happy to answer those as well. Thank you, Beth. Um, we've got another question here. If you read a lot of small books, with, will those count as individual books? Um, Nicole, I know you were going to jump in and say something. Would you mind responding to this question? And then um, I won't interrupt you with what you were going to say before. Sorry, I was just going to say I'm putting the link to the sponsorship opportunities in the chat so you can okay. check that. Uh, and then the question was about reading multiple books, correct? And, and how that... Multiple small books. Yeah, so... Again, we're leaving this free form on purpose so that whatever reading style you have that fits with you. So we're not counting things by individual books um, or page length, you know, number of pages or anything like that. As long as you're reading and sharing, we are very happy to have you on board. And yeah, I don't know if anyone has anything to add to that, but I would say that we're not going to be looking necessarily at the number of books. You might have little um, you know, incentives along the way, but that is not something that necessarily will go towards your team and really be a big difference with how, how we count it one way or the other. Great. Thank you. We got a really great question um, via email that I want to share and open it up to the team. Um, the question was that I've never fundraised before. So do you have any tips for engaging my community, engaging my family um, to get us supported? Um, I'll, I'll open up and then anyone else that wants to add to this, what I think is really um, is special and unique about doing a readathon is that the first thing that I would, the first tip I would say is identify what is your story, what is your IA story. We're talking about reading um, amazing books and, um, and I think this is an opportunity for you to reflect on the way that IA has impacted you and jot down some of what that means to you and, and the way that it has impacted your story. The, your ability to share your own personal experience at IEA is really what's going to be the most um, appealing thing for your community. They want to know how participating in IEA has impacted your life. They want to know how um, how you have been changed and made better because of it. And that's going to be the most um, appealing way for, or the most um, impactful way for you to invite people to be a part of your journey and your experience and your story with IEA and bring in and support the fundraiser. Anyone else want to jump in with some other really helpful tips to get started? 
I will. I'll just add that if you go on the IEA website and click the toolkit, there's a great toolkit with lots of information for you to read and some individual letters geared towards each team where you can just copy paste it into an email and send it to your friends and family or print it out and mail it off. So we look forward to having you fundraise for IEA. The most important thing is enthusiasm and being excited about what we're doing here today. I can't tell you how grateful I am for the team leads we have here and the support we've gotten from Jill and Beth. Thank you all as a community. You've done a marvelous job. Megan, any last words? We don't have any more questions coming in. Um, I just want to th say thank you so much for joining us this um, uh, today for this 30 minute um, kickoff. We are super excited to get, star uh, to get started. I do want to just um, say thank you to those that have already started fundraising. We've already got over $2,000 raised towards our goal, which is fantastic. And um, so I'm super encouraged and I think this is going to be a really wonderful season of reading together, fundraising um, together, and just creating that community that we so desperately need during this time. So thank you so much for joining us. Definitely um, take an opportunity to go to Give Lively, get signed up on your team, tell us what books you're going to read, and then look out for updates that will be coming very soon with more ways to participate and join. Thanks so much, everyone. Go teams! Yay! <laughs> Thanks, everybody.